Good evening. My name is Paul Berlich. I'm the chair for the History Museum this year. It's my honor to present um, the speakers today um, and introduce some individuals. But for those of you who have not been here before, this is a very special evening. In fact, it's the most important evening for the museum uh, year in and year out. It's our job and our duty and honor to recognize individuals and families that have made significant historic contributions to the county and whose actions have significantly affected the development of the county. In making those important uh, decisions, those people have changed our economic lives, social and political status. This is our night, our moment, to reflect on the treasures and the riches of our county and those people who made it so. There is one person that I want to acknowledge before we get on with the program, and I sincerely want to convey to you that throughout this time, there's really been but one person responsible for an evening like this. It's the one person that prior chairs and myself and all around uh, this uh, organization work for so hard. He's the person that brought the History Museum from the College of San Mateo to where it is today. Please put your hands together for Mitch Postal. Thank you, Mitch. My job now is to introduce the Master of Ceremonies, Jim Tunney, to my right. He asked me not to read his bio or he would call me for delay of game. But too bad, my podium. For those of you that don't know Jim, his nickname is the Dean of the NFL Referees was an official for the, in the league for 31 years between 1960 and 1990. During that time, he received a record 29 postseason assignments. And talking to Jim over dinner, he is the only, I think, uh, referee to have worked consecutive, consecutive Super Bowls, three, the Dallas, Miami, Oakland, Minnesota, and Oakland Redskins. Is that right, Jim? And he didn't make a mistake in any of those games he told me over dinner. Jim began, began officiating in high school and college football and basketball, he graduated from the Occidentals College in 1951. At the same time, he launched an educational career. He started out as a teacher in Los Angeles, Lincoln High School, but again, over dinner, he told me, he's a Giants fan. And by 1977, he was appointed superintendent of the Bellflower Unified School District. He still works on the York School's board, in 2009, he was named Public Official of the Year by the Monterey Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. While engaged in all of this, he has written 10 books and has been a professional speaker for 40 years. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Jim Tunney. Thank you. Good evening. I'm delighted to be here. And Paul, I want to tell you that was a a very generous introduction, but you did leave out one thing, and I must say it, I'm sorry, but when I entered the National Football League, it was a test. I got the highest score ever recorded. I got 98 out of 100. I only failed in two subjects, judgment and eyesight. It's the only two things I, I didn't do very well at. As we get our tribute to, the, to our honoree tonight, if you watched the game last Sunday night, I know you were disappointed with Peyton Manning setting a new passing record. Our honoree tonight held that record for six years. Six years he held the passing record, and nobody broke it, until finally a guy named Johnny Unitas came along and, and broke his record, but for six years, and the record doesn't happen that way anymore. We have a wonderful film about why they want to show you. So let's uh, run the film now, please. The year is 1926. The place, Harrison County, Texas. Marshall, Texas, to be exact. A boy comes into this world with quite a unique name. Yelberton Abraham Tittle. Soon everyone will know him better as Y.A. 
Long before Steve Young and Joe Montana would throw one pass and become synonymous with the words 49er quarterback, Y.A. will blaze a legendary trail before them, a trail that would eventually lead him to Canton, Ohio, and the NFL Football Hall of Fame. And now, the rest of the story. Y.A. plays football at Marshall High School and leads his team to the Texas State playoffs as a senior. He has awarded a scholarship to Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. What did you love about football? Well, my brother played, uh, my brother Jack played at Tulane University, played high school football. <clears throat> he was my idol, sort of, that I always wanted to be as good as Jack. And, and uh, so he played at Tulane in New Orleans and lived in New Orleans. And then when I came along, I got a scholarship to go to both schools in LSU, and I chose LSU because they were too late to de-emphasize their, their sports. In 1947, then a junior at LSU, YA is named the most valuable player of one of the most legendary Cotton Bowl games of all time, an ice storm battered scoreless tie between LSU and arch rival Arkansas. The Ice Bowl, as it comes to be known, still holds an honored place in collegiate football history. Y.A. leaves LSU with numerous school passing records next to his name, many of which stand for over 25 years. At the 1948 NFL Draft, Y.A.'s name is called as the number six overall selection by the Detroit Lions, but begins his professional career with the Baltimore Colts of the All-American Football Conference and later the NFL, where he plays for three years. The Colts franchise folds after the 1950 season, and YA heads west to join the San Francisco 49ers. Also in 1948, YA gets his own first round pick when he asks for the hand of his high school sweetheart, Minette Deloach. And you met Minette very early in your life? I guess I met her in the. She went to East End School, grammar school, and I went to West End. And I met her when we went to junior high school. Oh my gosh. Was it a love at first sight situation? Pretty, pretty much. I dated other girls later, and she did too, but I always said that when I get out of college, I'm going to marry my high school sweetheart. Uh -huh. And I did. And that was her. Y.A. and Minette are married on June 20th, the start of a wonderful relationship and journey that will last for 64 years. Y.A. is a 49er from 1951 to 1960. He's named to the Pro Bowl team in 1953 and 1954. In 1954, he and three of his 49er backfield teammates, running backs John Henry Johnson, Joe the Jet Perry, and the King, Hugh McElhenney, are proclaimed the Million Dollar Backfield. This entire backfield most agree the best ever to play as one unit will come to be individually enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. I'm guessing you guys didn't really make a million dollars in that million dollar back. No, no. <laughs> all, all total of us didn't make a million dollars in our whole career. Where did the nickname come from? I don't know. <laughs> what, what were those teammates like? How fast was Joe Perry? Joe Perry was lightning fast, and he jumped offside most of the time. He was made him faster. <laughs> I mean, he was in backfield motion, and they didn't call him because he was always in motion. McElhaney was fast, but he was a runaround guy. John Henry was tough. And he was, you know, he'd cuss them out and spit on them and everything. And I said, John Henry, don't just quit cussing these guys out because they're taking it out on me. <laughs> Four players from the same backfield, all inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. That could never happen. Yes, it can, and it did. YA's shining star year with the 49ers comes in 1957, when he is named NFL MVP, first team NFL, all pro, and invited to the Pro Bowl once again. While YA and the 49ers enjoy a great season in 1957, a devastating loss in the divisional playoffs to the Detroit Lions after leading 24 to seven at halftime, abruptly ends what appears to be a championship run for the team. 49er teammates Y.A. and R.C. Owens perfect a 49er play that will be forever known as the alley-oop, 
a rainbow spiral that falls from the sky as RC leaps above the Defender to cradle it. The deft touch of YA and the size and spring of RC combine to make this play work time and time again. Tittle just threw the ball at the Seagulls, and Owens either out-timed or out-jumped the Defender. While a 49er, YA also has the great vision to start an insurance company to create his life after football career. YA Tittle Insurance and Financial Services exists to this day as a thriving and professional organization. You had, even as a player, started an insurance business. Uh, yes. Why did you start it so early? Well, everybody, you had to do something in the offseason. You had, uh, we, we, we made good money as a football player, but, but if it didn't work in the offseason, all, all your money that you played for would be spent and you wouldn't save anything. So I had a chance to go uh, with a friend um, and, and asked me to become a partner, and I, I, I did become a minor partner, and then eventually bought him out and the rest of them and then owned the business. YA remains with the 49ers through the 1960 season, sharing time on the field with young upstart John Brody from Stanford. Before the 1961 season, YA, then 34, is told he's been traded to the New York football giants. He contemplates retirement, but decides to head east, saying in his own words, throwing a football is the best thing I can do in life, and I had done it since I was in the sixth grade. So I took my old shoulder pads that I'd used for 16 years and went to New York, feeling like a rookie trying to make the team for the first time. In the trade, the 49ers will receive second-year guard Lou Cordelion, the Giants' first-round draft pick in the 1960 draft. The 49ers think they've pulled off quite a steal from the Giants, a 23-year-old first-round draft pick for an aging quarterback. Are they and everyone else in for a big surprise? From 1961 through 1963, Yelberton Abraham Tittle from Marshall, Texas, takes the Big Apple, its fans, and all NFL fans on a fantastic ride. Three straight Eastern Divisional titles come during those years, along with 86 touchdown passes, 36 in the 1963 season alone, a record that stands for over two decades, not to mention seven touchdown passes in a game in 1962 that contribute to making YA the first player in NFL history to throw for 30 touchdowns in consecutive seasons. 80 of YA's 86 touchdown passes from 1961 to 1963 come in games the Giants win. Truly incredible. Three Pro Bowl selections, three first-time All-Pro awards, and three NFL Most Valuable Player awards go on to the Tittle Mantle. He is the best quarterback in the National Football League. First of all, playing in the biggest city in the world, and being on Broadway and seeing your name in lights, and then I'll never forget my greatest honor of my lifetime was, was walking down through Times Square in that little ticker-type parade that goes around. It says, Tittle Scalp Skins. Seven touchdowns, tittle scalp skin, and boy, my wife and I just stopped and looked at it and took pictures. <laughs> we were we were in heaven. But as things happen, 1964 is not a good year for the New York Giants nor YA. The team slumps to two wins, ten losses, and two ties, and YA's performance falls off as well after three memorable and record-breaking seasons. During the 1964 season. YA unceremoniously becomes the subject of one of the most iconic and well-known photographs in the history of American sports. It's of a kneeling, helmetless, battered, and bleeding football warrior after being hurled to the ground by Pittsburgh Steeler defensive lineman John Baker. YA suffers a concussion and cracks sternum on the play. What do you think about when you see that picture? Well, it made me famous more than anything else. <laughs> but uh, I don't remember who, I don't remember getting hit. I don't, I don't remember that. I do remember that photographers so coming up and, and sticking the camera right in my face under, underneath me and shooting at me all over the place. But uh, 
And that's about all I remember of the, of, of the, uh, the event. He knows in his heart it's time. Time to walk away from the game he loves. And he does at the end of the 1964 season. In his own words, it was the end of my dream. It was over. YA's number 14 jersey is retired by the New York Giants, joining only 11 other former Giants players that have played for the franchise, which was established in 1925. The Tito legacy now begins. 242 career touchdown passes, 33,000 yards passing, seven Pro Bowls, four first-team All-Pro selections, four NFL Most Valuable Player awards. This is the stuff that NFL Hall of Famers are made of. And indeed, it was. YA is voted into the Hall in 1971, where his bronze bust and plaque will live forever, along with his million-dollar backfield teammates. What does that honor mean to you? Everything. Well, what I mean, my life was, from a little kid, was, was football. From junior high school in Marshall, Texas, to Marshall High School, and to LSU, and all my years of, well, football was a life for me. And uh, being elected to the Hall of Fame is, uh, was the biggest honor of my life. While being elected to the Professional Football Hall of Fame was clearly one of the most important things that ever happened to YA. Well, I'll take it back. Over there is my daughter, Diane, somewhere. She was, that was the biggest honor of my life. <laughs> his most prized treasures have always been his family. His wife, four children, seven grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. YA's daughter, Diane Dillette, tells us about the man, his legacy, and what being honored in the place he calls home means to the Tittle family. For so many years is that dad has been on a first name basis with the world. He's never Mr. Tittle. It's hey, Wahye, you know, hey, it, it's, it's, uh, it's like he's just always been on a first name basis with the world. So whatever is said, there's a, a feeling that he's a part of their lives and they're a part of his, his life. And, and so it goes. And it's been that way for a very, very long time. This is a great honor given to my dad by the San Mateo County Historical Association as the history maker of 2014. You know, dad has received many honors in his life, but this, again, it, this, is, this is home for us. This is our community. The San Mateo County Historical Association is pleased and proud to honor a true gentleman the great number 14, Mr. Yelberton Abraham Y.A. Tittle, as its 2014 history maker. Give a standing ovation, Y.A. Tittle. Thank you. While you're on your feet, we've got a couple of tributes, but while you're on your feet, one more thing about Y.A. His birthday is day after tomorrow. Have a seat for a minute, please. We've asked uh, Bill Ring to come up. Bill is a, a longtime friend of YA's. Bill is a great running back, not only for the 49ers, but for San Mateo and for Claremont. And Bill, if you come up forward, please, and see. We've asked him to say a few words. And then we present the trophy, and uh, we asked Diane to say a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Len Eschmont Award, which is probably better than any touchdown he's ever scored, Mr. Bill Ring. Thanks, Jim. Certainly uh, one of the, whenever you were on the field and you had him in the game, you knew you had the best ref in the whole NFL. So we loved you. I don't think you ever called me for a penalty either, so I love you even more. Uh, just before I get going, I just want to thank uh, Olivia Martinez, who's on the board, uh, uh, for asking me to be here tonight. And I will be ever grateful to her late husband, Tom Martinez, who was my coach in high school. I mean, coach in, at CSM. And uh, he was my favorite football coach of all time. Uh, love him, love your family, and we certainly miss uh, Tom. 
Um, Also, I know Milt McCall has been also introduced, but Milt McCall and I were rookies together on a 1981 team uh, with the 49ers, and Milt made a great play in the first Super Bowl. Milt made a great play in the first Super Bowl that caused a fumble and changed that game on a, on a kickoff, so you might remember that. His wife, Cindy. His wife, Cindy. My wife, Connie, and I want to give a shout out to Larry Owens, the coach of College of San Mateo. Go Bulldogs. I've known YA since my rookie year with the 49ers in 1981 when I first met him playing tennis after we won our first Super Bowl. I couldn't believe at the time I was, I was invited by a guy named Red Fay. Some of you in the audience probably know Red. He had a home in Woodside, had a great tennis court, and that's where we battled these matches. And YA was a superb tennis player. And I couldn't, well, he's kind of, he's kind of joking. He didn't know. But I couldn't, I couldn't believe that I was playing with this NFL icon. It was hard to believe. I had kind of had to pinch myself because I heard the name. Um, it's no different today since uh, I'm really humbled and honored to have the opportunity to, to be here tonight to pay tribute to an NFL legend, an NFL Hall of Famer, and now a San Mateo County history maker. YA, uh, the list that you are joining tonight is a very impressive group of people and you're gonna add to that. Uh, one thing for sure, when you make up a, a doubles tennis team, uh, you want way, uh, YA on your team. Uh, and that's because you rarely will lose if you ever have him on your team as a partner. <laughs> when in doubt, call it out, he said. He was all business on the tennis court, but he was also a lot of fun especially when you won. He was always drawing up every play, every point he would draw up a play and you'd be doing something on the court and he'd be telling me to poach here, poach that way and go that way. But he dis we discombobulated everyone that we played with. So uh, thank you, Y, for all that coaching. He was a great coach. And he was also the fiercest competitor I can ever remember playing with. Uh, and I can't imagine what he would have been like in his youth, in, in terms of uh, playing in the NFL. So you've already heard about Marshall, Texas, but in four seasons at LSU, he passed for 2,576 yards and led the Tigers to a 23-11-2 and two record, including the appearance in the Cotton Bowl, and you heard how well he did there. And although YA never won a Super Bowl, Y.A. is considered to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, without question. <laughs> one time, uh, according to Rookie Tittle, his son, Y.A. captain an ESPN quarterback competition for the longest throw, th longest throw while he was in his 40s. He said, shoot, son, uh, they must be muscle-bound or something. They can only throw the, the ball about 68 yards. Because <laughs> back in the day, Y could chuck it 83 yards. <laughs> so now with these unbelievable stats on the gridiron, what many people here tonight may not know is that he also was an all-pro businessman in insurance, and in addition, a real estate investor in Silicon Valley during the epicenter of the high-tech investing. As rookie, his son told me, dad did an exceptionally well job, exceptionally well in insurance, but did even better in real estate, thanks to a good friend named Ray Handley, 
and I believe we have some of Ray's family here tonight. Raise your hands. Ray built buildings with YA as his partner with tenants such as Intel, National Semiconductor, Advanced Micro Devices, Google, and Atari. In addition to having them as tenants, YA sold them commercial insurance. <laughs> I call that vertical integration. <laughs> not, bad, uh, not a bad business plan, YA, for sure. Also, not bad from a guy from Marshall, Texas. YA is also a great family man. Was married to his late wife, his high school sweetheart, Minette, after college. Was married for, I think, 48 years. 64, sorry. 64, sorry. Has four children. Mike, who is deceased. Pat, Diane, and Rookie. Seven grandchildren and five great uh, grandchildren. YA never missed a game of theirs and was there for Diane, his only daughter. Rookie said, Dad gave us the love of football, but we didn't have a choice. <laughs> we had no rights. With that said, I wouldn't have it any other way. According to Rookie, during family vacations in Mexico or Hawaii, the competition in the family was beyond being reasonable. One time at the hotel they stayed at in Hawaii, they got complaints from the manager and f because people could hear from the beach in the neighboring rooms from, uh, from the rooms nearby, the yelling and screaming going on over a game of Monopoly <laughs> from the Tittle's room. But competition was always encouraged and vacations were always filled with competition usually in tennis, Monopoly, or playing cards and hearts. Throw in there as well, why he always loves a good argument. The, f the family frequently traveled around the world one time to New Guinea, only one year after they outlawed cannibalism. <laughs> one time, Minette, his wife, was concerned since one of the tribesmen continued to stare at YA. Manette didn't know if it was the brand new red Adidas outfit or was it YA that he, that he wanted. <laughs> Rookie recounted a time when his brother was injured on the football field at Menlo College and YA, YA, as tough as they come, came out to the field, hovered over him and said, well, are you just going to sit there or going to get back in the game? <laughs> there was no quit in YA, which is why I'm sure he, in, he instilled this in all of his kids. One of the other great memories for YA and Rookie is when YA coached at Menlo Atherton High School with Coach Ben Parks. We all might remember him. Rookie's senior year, and they went undefeated and his best memory is beating my Carlmont High School Scots, who were rated number six in the Bay Area at Terramara Field in a terrible storm. Being a former Scot, I can't say that's a great story. <laughs> YA is also one of the funniest people you can imagine has great wit about him. YA, I want to congratulate you on the uh, History Maker Award for both you and your entire family, and God bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Ring, ladies and gentlemen. Let me ask Paul to join me. Paul is going to present the Bronze Eagle to YA. This is the, no, stay right there, stay right there, stay right there. Diane's going to say a few words. We asked Diane. His daughter Diane is say a few words. But as Diane comes up, are you going to come up here first? You want to come up here first? Diane, your daughter wants to say a couple of things. You go first, Ed. Got the LSU on. Darren Mann is here, LSU. Go Tigers. Diane will go first, and then we'll, we'll present the honoree. First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you to the San Mateo County Historical Association 
Thank you, honored guests, past honorees. Thank you all for being here tonight to honor our father, Y.A. Tittle, as the history maker for 2014. Dad's birthday, his 88th, as you know, is but two days from now. And I cannot think of a greater party than this one here, a gathering of friends, colleagues, fellow football players, but thankfully no mean old tackles that I know of. Um, but yes, supporters of the San Mateo Historical Association's good work on behalf of our community are present, as well as four generations of the Tittle family, children, grandchildren, and four of our parents' seven great-grandchildren. Our mother, Manette Tittle, my father's high school sweetheart and wife of 64 years, is not with us, but she is here in spirit, along with my eldest brother, Mike, whom we lost to cancer in recent years. But my father's little baby brother, Don, flew in from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Little baby brother. Little baby brother. Incidentally, we have Dawn to thank for being Y.A. Tittle's first receiver, once upon a time, close to 80 years ago, after Dad killed all the bushes in his front yard by pretending that they were his receivers, there was baby brother Dawn going deep for a nickel a month over a period of years. <laughs> Dawn claims that his growth was stunted, but he survived, thankfully, and he and my father have been needling each other ever since. In fact, they are needling champions and the playoffs for this year or next year start tomorrow, don't they? Don't they, Don? Um, and my father's sister-in-law, uh, Olivia Deloach, the widow of our mother's beloved brother, Buddy, and the most wonderful aunt in all the world is here from the Central Valley with members of her family. And I wish to thank you, Wayne Miller, for coming all the way from LSU and Baton Rouge to be with us tonight. And, and just on a personal note, I thank my sister of heart, Cindy White, uh, for being here, uh, for being here in this wonderful gathering. And Anna, she is that earth angel who took care of my mother who passed away two years ago. And now, if I may, I'd like to ask her and her wonderful family to join with ours, all cousins and generations of the Tittle clan present tonight, to stand in thanks for all of you, everyone, who chose to remember Y.A. Tittle tonight and pay tribute to the Get Up guy who never said no to an inch in a forward direction and would still like to suit up and get out there if he could. So, Tittles, family, thank you. So we all know that dad is a football legend and perhaps even something of a fossil from a bygone era of sports history. As an example, when another Hall of Fame football great quarterback Johnny Unitas conferred with dad about his prospects for a raise to 14,000 a year, dad's reply, don't press your luck. <laughs> In December of 1949, while I was sharing my baby blanket with a football and that pigskin was looming very large in my life, dad was throwing passes professionally and dreaming of a championship. But the truth was that his dream of a championship went back to his childhood and to the moment of perfection he imagined as a young boy when listening to a football game on the family radio in which his idol, slinging Sammy Baugh, went back to pass. Dad told me once that it was then that he imagined per perfection for the very first time. As many of you know, Y.A. Tittle, Yat, Colonel Slick, the Bald Eagle, is one of the very few, if only, Hall of Fame quarterbacks who never won the big one, the championship, 
that is the ancient equivalent of the Super Bowl. But let me share with you some good news about this piece of sports trivia. We imagined. We who watched our father go back to pass with his dream of a championship title, took it to heart and dreamed of it also, wondered at it also. What was it that it took years of discipline, determination, focus, devotion, a deep awareness and experience of pain, that it mandated a lifetime in the public eye, for better or worse, and in the going to that goal, we who also wanted his dream were witness to thrilling flights of beauty, brutal beauty, and highly visible proof of our Father's excellence. So what was that championship victory that it demanded YA Tittle's everything, the one that never came on the scoreboard? While eluding him, us, over the years, I do believe he gave something to me because I watched his relentless pursuit. I lived it. And I can say that what came to live in my life and imagination as a result of my father's quest for a championship title loomed as startling and mysterious as that pigskin next to a pipsqueak in a family photograph. It loomed as large as life, as I came to understand over the years the sum total of every broken bone and injury in light of a championship that implied day by day excellence, rain or shine, and the exercise of one's best, even on a daily basis. So I just wanted to say thank you for this, Dad, for giving to me the moment that Sammy Baugh gave to you when you imagined perfection for the very first time. For me, the moment became imbued with music, but it all came from YA Tittle back to pass. And so on the eve of your 88th birthday, I wish to say that you did win the big one, maybe even the very biggest. You were great in the game, but everyone knows, I know, you are a champion in life. That's you, Daddy-o. That's you. That's you. Thank you very much. Diane, I didn't know I was that good. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you all for being here. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Diane, you said such nice things about me. <laughs> and? Yes. Why don't you all say nice things to me about me down at the office? <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm very happy to be here with so many good friends, especially Steve, Diane's husband, and, and everybody from Texas. Don Tittle has come out here. He, he thinks he can still, still beat me in tennis, but he can't. <laughs> Anne, Anna, uh, and her husband. She won't give me a, she won't give me a second vodka. <laughs> she, she, she takes care of me at home. And well, uh, Anne Albee. Thank you to everybody here. And Diane, you're so beautiful. <laughs> you're 88. Are, are, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you related to me? <laughs> well, I'd like to recognize other people here. I know I'm really. Appreciate this. This is a, a, a great honor for me. When you get this old, and no matter that guy in the middle back there, is that, is that Wayne, Miller? Wayne Miller from LSU. Stand up! Stand, stand up! Wow! I 
Wayne, don't tell anybody here my grades at LSU. <laughs> I don't, they think I'm a smart guy, but I don't, don't tell off on tell on me. My brother Don's here. Wave your hand, Don. He's, he, he's uglier than I am. <laughs> All my friends are here from, from my office, Ann Albee, Steve, Diane's husband, and what? Lukey and Lori. Oh, where's Lukey and Lori? Lukey and Lori, they're here. Maybe they stepped out for a minute. They're way in back. Okay, my son's here, Rookie. Anyway, I want you to know that if you spend a lot of time trying to make an old man cry, you figured out a way to do it. <laughs> Why, it's with great relief that I present you. <laughs> With this eagle, Jim, you want to explain our reward? No, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> this is a Historical Association's uh, bronze eagle that uh, was, actually it was a replica because the other one was, was stolen, I believe, and this is a replica of it. <laughs> we, think, we think the mayor in town took it away, but we don't know. <laughs> it's a, anyway, why this is for you, congratulations. And may I say that my first year, 40 years in the NFL were your last four. To be on the field with you, there was nothing better. Nothing better. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your wonderful attention and for your tribute to YA, a wonderful man. We hope you'll come back. We know you'll come back next year. Thank you. Have a drive, safe drive home. Thank you very much.